Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David. We're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number five of the series where I am learning how to use my CNC machine. I have a Shark HD 510. Never used a CNC machine before. Never used the software to control them before either. But I'm learning. And I'm taking you all with me on the journey. In, uh, in this video, we're going to go ahead and make this, uh, this cool little uh, infill, temporary infill block. Uh, in my neck pocket, which would allow me to run a great big three-quarter inch uh, roundover bit around the edge of this guitar and give it that really cool kind of a look. I think it looks pretty cool. Anyway, if you think you might dig that sort of thing, how about you stick around and check it out. Anyway, let's get rolling with the video. So, um, I am not totally sure why it happened. I still haven't figured out why it happened, but if you look right here, I have an errant cut and one over here, and actually one down here that's down on the ledge of the uh, cavity uh, control cover base. Um, anyway, I'm not sure why that happened, but it's a fixable deal. This is gonna be a painted guitar. Um, I wish I could figure out why that went wrong like that, because I'd actually tested this, all of these uh, G-codes on the piece of MDF, and that didn't happen. For some reason this time it happened. It only happened once, it happened three times. Um, but anyway, so, uh, but I've got a little piece. I think I could fill that in just nice. And I may leave this one here open because that may be a good little way to open this because it's going to have magnets that hold it down in the back without screws. So that may be a good uh, lift off spot, but we'll see. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and fix this guy right here. So I've got a little piece of maple I ripped down. I've got my block plane and we're going to work on that right now. So this thing really wasn't all that bad to fix. Um, I just shaped the piece down with my block plane a little bit, fitted it in there, had to chisel the end of the whole square and uh, glued it in. It was nothing to it at all. Glad it was a painted guitar. So an interesting thing is uh, a commenter from last week's video when this actually happened, um, he thought it could be from radio frequencies coming from uh, a close, uh, a, power cords are in close proximity to my uh, CNC control cables. And I actually, down the chase way that I have the control, the motor control cables going from the uh, VFD into the uh, CNC motor, I've got a power cord running through there too. So he mentioned in his comment that, you know, uh, something like that can make CNC machines do some weird things. And so that's the best explanation I have. It was uh, radio frequency uh, uh, picked up from an adjoining power cable. And I am going to remove that power cable next time I use this CNC machine for sure. Anyway, pretty simple fix. Glad it wasn't a really expensive uh, fancy wood stained guitar. So this all came out okay. Okay, so the next thing I have to do on this guitar is I want to router this edge of this body. And to do that, I needed this little piece right here. So I wanted to kind of stop and explain, even though I've obviously already routed the body, I wanted to drop back and explain what this is, and why I did it. And then I can get into showing you the design on the computer, how I designed it, and then cutting down on the CNC. But anyway, 
So this has a great big three quarter inch uh, round over route around the edge of the thing. And I wanted this router uh, profile to come up all the way on this edge here and all the way on this edge here because I wanted that to curve like that where it meets the neck, which I think is going to look pretty cool in the end. And But to do that, um, obviously I've already got a neck pocket cut and I needed something to run the router on. So I decided to go back to uh, the design in V-Carve, pull out this neck pocket uh, shape right here, set it on its own layer, and then I was able to cut a, or a, a draw, a, do a G-code file to cut this shape out itself, and then I was able to run it on the CNC, and it fits beautiful, and uh, which is going to, which did allow me, let's see if I can pull it out of here, okay. So there's the piece right there. It's an inch and an eighth inch uh, thick, and it's the shape of the neck pocket. And it allowed me to run that router profile around that edge. And I think it looks really cool, and around the back too. So I was able to uh, run that because I had that little infill piece in there. And I don't think I'd have been able to get that shape had I not done that. But anyway, let me take you over to the computer right now, and I will show you how I... Uh, how I drew that up, how I separated it out, and then we'll come on over to the CNC machine and cut it out. And then we'll be able to put it in and route this body to where it'll look like this in the end. Anyway, let's get going with that right now. So what I did was I saved the entire drawing, or I opened the entire drawing on a new layer. And once I got the new layer open and named and it set as the active layer, I just went around and erased all of the parts that I did not want in this new drawing. So I simply took them all out, and then once they were all gone and I had nothing but the neck pocket left, I centered the neck pocket on the drawing so I could use a smaller piece of wood to, uh, to cut this out of. And then I would just highlight that particular, uh, that hole, that shape that's on there, and I did a, what's called a profile tool path which is a tool path that cuts all the way around the outside perimeter of that shape. And, uh, and I used a quarter inch up spiral uh, end mill. And of course you see three dots around the perimeter. Those are three tabs that are supposed to keep it uh, anchored to the waist piece around the outside while you're finishing the operation of uh, uh, CNCing. And, uh, and that was basically it. And then I run a little test here you can see the three little tabs in there, and that uh, that shows me what the cut's going to look like, and it looked good to me. So I then proceeded to uh, take it over to the CNC machine and give it a try. So that was simply a piece of scrap wet redwood that I had uh, laying around the shop. And I took it and I planed it down to one and one eighth inches thick, which is the thickness of my neck pocket. And then I just proceeded on with my normal setup procedure here. Glued it down with the old super glue trick. Got it stuck into place. And started cutting away. I think I did this whole thing in probably five or six passes. I'm still learning the depths that are best uh, to use for different operations. And, uh, and that's also, of course, based on the, the wood density and all that. And redwood's, of course, pretty soft stuff, but I still took it pretty so slow. And it fit like a champ. Fit really good. So I just made this little neck pocket infill piece because I want to try a new edge on this guitar that I've never done before. That is a three quarter inch roundover bit. And I want to try making a guitar where I round over that entire edge, both front and back. 
it may look terrible I don't really know um, I've always kind of wanted to try this because I've seen it on other guitars I don't know that I've ever seen it on a telly there's probably been a million people did it on a telly too but I've never seen it and I think it could be a pretty cool look so I'm gonna give it a try on this guitar right here and I wanted to fill that in because I want to round it all the way around the thing here and of course if there's not something here then my bearing is gonna drop in and and mess everything up so Anyway, I've got it so that bearing will be able to ride on that on both sides and I should be able to round this uh, along with the rest of the body. And I thought about this for a while because I wanted to cut the neck pocket while it was still on the, the original uh, uh, body blank so it was held in place properly. So I had to do it first but in order to round it over and round it all past this uh, I had to have something to do so I filled it in with that um, and I'm going to cut it with this. And I hope it looks cool. I'm going to try. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get set up on that router table over there and see what that looks like. So that is a great big router bit right there. And I took the smallest little pass at a time. I maybe took, I don't know, you can see it there, probably just, just kind of nipped the corner. Then I'd raise it about an eighth of an inch, I'd run it around again, I'd raise it another eighth of an inch, and I just kind of kept doing that through the whole thing. And it went, uh, it went really well. If I'd have taken that all in one big shot, it would have probably tore up something, for sure. If you ever had a router bit or a shape or something like that kick something out of your hands, you, you learn to respect those tools for sure. Okay, so I think that came out pretty cool looking. I got it rounded all the way around. That was a three-quarter inch roundover bit. I'm not, I'm not hating that at all. I think it's sort of, uh, I think it's sort of cool looking. I really do. Um, and it even left a little. It's about a three-eighths of an inch flat spot here. And I'm about to sand this whole thing. I've got my sander out. And I'm going to sand it to just kind of clean it up. And then we're going to put this body aside and get going on the neck. But for now, I want to clean it up. I want to get rid of that ridge. Got a little deep in a couple of spots. But, oh, and hey, I really like the way that, uh, that little neck insert block I made. It's kind of protecting this whole thing. This whole edge is being protected. Now I can sand it uh, really nicely to follow the contours where it will die into the neck later. And I think that will all stay real clean and real straight. So, anyway, pretty cool. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to set it up on my bench here and I'm going to get sanding away on it. Not the final sand, but just to kind of clean it up and, uh, and then we're going to get moving on the neck. So anyway, let me turn that camera down and let's uh, start sanding on this and we'll get this body the next stage. So I have 180 grit uh, sandpaper uh, on that uh, on that air sander right there, and I wasn't trying to get too uh, you know too perfect with the sanding. I was just trying to knock down that ridge and sort of take out any other tooling marks on the thing and just kind of clean it up. Before I go to start um, sealing the body and priming and painting and everything, I'll go through a complete sanding uh, process on this. But this is just to clean it up for now, just to make it look good. I really dig the way that uh, that back contour came out around the neck where it'll uh, blend into the neck. I really think that that turned out really looking cool. I can't wait to get a neck in here and see what that feels like. Oh, and I sanded my control cavity cover along with it too.
Well, I think that's about it for this one, folks. I appreciate you all sticking around and uh, checking out this, uh, this guitar build I'm doing here with my CNC journey. I think it's looking pretty cool. I kind of like that rounded, uh, that rounded effect, and I kept that edge flat. That's what I was just doing on that spindle sander over there. And, uh, and see, I got these little guys fixed here that were uh, from a couple videos ago where I showed you where my CNC ran off. And I think I'm going to keep that one right there, and that's going to be how I'm going to lift my uh, control cover off. I think that'll be all right, too. So it's all coming out cool, and I can picture this in my head. I'm going to paint this. The color is called brandy wine. It's like a, almost a candy apple red, and I may even spray a matte finish on it, too, which is, uh, kind of gives it a cool look. I've done it before. Anyway, uh, next week we got a lot of thinking to do because i got to figure out how to cut a neck on that CNC machine. And that's been rolling around my head for a while now, and I've got some ideas. And I uh, hope you come back and check it out. Anyway, until next time, God bless you. You all have a wonderful week, and we'll see you all in the next one.